The models have entirely shifted to an Arctic pattern showing back-to-back -back major Arctic blasts to end December and start January. This will open the door for many snowstorm opportunities throughout the central and eastern states. We even have three winter storms expected to impact the mid-Atlantic and Northeast before December even comes to an end. The Midwest, Great Lakes, and Ohio Valley will also see an increase in snowstorm probabilities as Arctic air and storm systems clash, bringing plowable snowfall events later on in the pattern. So first things first, let's just dive into the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic here where we have a Christmas sandwich of snowstorms coming as we have a snow system moving in just before Christmas and one moving in just after Christmas and even a third one just after those are concluded right before for New Year's. So there is an action-packed period ahead for the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. Let's just dive into it and we're looking at snowstorm, winter storm number one. This one is going to be more of a pure snow event. There will be some ice on top. So we see some snowfall moving in for 10 a.m. on December 23rd tomorrow from the time I'm making this video for states like Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey. Later on, this does move more northeasterly as we see this impact more so the Adirondack Mountains of New York into New England with some moderate to heavy snowfall for these areas. And eventually that low tries to form a little bit offshore and we start to see some heavier activity for the state of Maine. And we do see this one come to an end sometime around Christmas Eve afternoon on the 24th. Now, obviously, this is a massive travel concern, considering a lot of people are traveling on the 23rd or the 24th. We can see anywhere from two to six inches of snowfall expected throughout these blue areas, which does include Northeast Pennsylvania, Northern New Jersey, very close to New York City and there where you guys will probably be between one or two inches of snowfall. Uh, also, southern New England, somewhere in that one to three inch range for Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and that does include Boston, of course. And then as we move more so towards those mountain ranges like the Adirondacks, the Green Mountains, the White Mountains, and then into a bit of Maine, that's where we see the purples and pink. Thinking six to ten inches perhaps are possible. Looking at the freezing rain possibilities, we could see pretty light amounts there for Pennsylvania, even West Virginia down there and then for areas in New York. That does tend to freeze a lot better, hitting that obviously frozen snow, it freezes pretty instantly and it creates a layer of ice on top, which is gonna make road conditions even worse for you guys' travels. Looking at the temperatures here, we're gonna segue into the second storm in just a moment, so stay tuned. The Northeast has more on the way and we're gonna be talking about the Midwest a lot as well, even the West where tons of winter storms are coming in. But we can see we're a little colder along the East and that's gonna be a trend here the Mid-Atlantic and more particularly the Northeast is going to stay cold even when the rest of the nation is very, very warm. And we do know that as we approach Christmas here, it is going to get quite warm for some folks. For the 23rd into the 24th, we're dealing with near normal conditions out there for the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. And that is cold enough to support this snowfall event for, again, the 23rd into the 24th. Meanwhile, the central states, the western states like the Rockies as well, we're dealing with these brown areas at 15 to 30 degrees above normal. I mean, really, really far above normal temperatures, but look at the northeast, they're staying colder. Even for Christmas Day here, we see near normal conditions in the northeast while we're dealing with record high temperatures throughout the plains, parts of the Midwest, deep south, uh, northern plains into the Rockies. These areas are, again, 15, 20, or even 30 degrees above what is normal. It's going to be really, really warm for the Christmas time frame here. And then as we can see for the days following, like the 26th here, not only are we dealing with average conditions like the first snowstorm, we're dealing with far below average temperatures here for areas in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic, which again is going to support snowfall for this system moving in afterwards. This is for the 25th, so Christmas. We do see possibly some snow showers there for northern New England. I wanted to point that out during the morning and daytime on Christmas Day. So not only are you getting snowfall before and after Christmas, you might even be seeing some flakes flying on Christmas for these areas. We do see as we move past this, though, for the afternoon of Friday the 26th, we start to see some freezing rain for Ohio, Pennsylvania, areas throughout the heart of the Mid-Atlantic, like Northern Virginia, Maryland, D.C. in there. The second system is a heavier snowstorm, in my opinion, but not only that, also a much bigger ice concern as well, as we're going to see a lot of pinks in there for Pennsylvania, Southern New York, New Jersey, but we also see a lot of heavy snowfall there throughout areas of New York, even New York City, right on the fence there, Long Island, Southern New England here. I think this one could be a heavy hitter, again, with 6 to 10 inches for some of these areas. We see Boston getting some moderate to heavy snowfall again, Connecticut, Rhode Island. And that one is said and done by the afternoon of Saturday, the 27th. 
Now I wanted to show the GFS as well before we get into the snowfall and ice because this one shows a much further south solution as of the most up-to-date 12Z GFS model run that just came out today. We do see eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, even southern Jersey getting in on some snowfall on the front end of this one. And the bullseye would maybe be somewhere here in eastern Pennsylvania, northern New Jersey, New York City on this GFS model. So it is considerably further to the south. Looking at the total snowfall for this one, though, on the European model, I mean, we're dealing with, again, two to six inches in the blues, which does include, again, northeastern Pennsylvania, northern New Jersey, even some of central New Jersey, and then New York City, southern New England, a lot of these highly populated areas just after Christmas. So again, you're going to be dealing with travel concerns, leaving your home and going to wherever you're going. But then the days following 26th, 27th, when you're thinking about leaving that location and going back home, there's going to be a whole nother system to worry about. So I just want to get this out to you guys. Be safe, please, if you are traveling in these areas, because there is numerous snow events that can seriously disrupt it or even make it dangerous to travel. We do see another strip of six to 10 inches of snowfall from the Finger Lakes down into the Catskill Mountains. And there is an area for Long Island, New York City, where this model is flirting with four, five, six, seven inches of snowfall. And looking at the freezing rain, this one is a much, much greater concern for the freezing rain. And this is really high total, so take it with a grain of salt because I think this could be less than this. And it could be less than this and still be majorly concerning because we see up to half an inch of freezing rain being picked up by this most recent European model for Pennsylvania, southern New York into New Jersey. Uh, but if it is upwards of a half inch, that is a serious, serious concern, not only for travel, but then you're starting to talk about branches and power lines and all sorts of impacts from the ice. But this would be a travel nightmare if we saw any sort of major ice storm through. And then we do have even more snowfall potential in these areas. The European model as of now is not going to have a major winter storm here for the 28th, just a couple of days later, Sunday the 28th. But it does have some ice up there for uh, upstate New York into New England, even some snowfall, uh, more particularly for Maine there. This would be a little bit more of a minor system. It is worth noting that we do see lake effect snowfall moving in just after this as well as we get more major cold air after the 28th, which we will talk about a little bit later on. Major Arctic blasts are moving in now on the models. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the GFS, though, because this one, much like the last system, does differ quite a bit for the 28th. We see the morning of Sunday. This is about 7 a.m. on Sunday, the 28th. We see heavy snowfall again for upstate New York into New England, even southern New England here, dealing with moderate to heavy snowfall. And then mostly, I would say, a bullseye of Massachusetts into Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine would be the likely outcome here. But look at how this low develops. We see the low right here, south of uh, Massachusetts, south of Boston there, which would put these areas in perfect position for a heavy snowfall event. Definitely something to watch for. It's not in the long range. It's kind of in the medium range to even semi-short range. We're looking at about five or six days out here. So definitely something to pay attention to. It looks like there's going to be a storm system. Uh, the impacts could vary for sure on that one, though. Now, I wanted to talk about the West as well. We'll dive into the Midwest, Ohio Valley and Great Lakes in a second, but they are dealing with tons of snowfall, but even more so now on the models for the later time frame, looking at early January, where we could just have this major, major jet stream just still pouring storms into this area. And the totals would be gargantuan. Looking at the total snowfall, we're dealing with 80, 90, 100 plus inches of snowfall. And even on the bottom right-hand corner of my screen, it says a maximum of 228.7 inches on this particular model run, which means somewhere on this map, there is 228.7 inches of snowfall occurring according to this European model. Just let that sit for a second. I don't think I need to even add context to that. That is just absolutely insane. Now, obviously, that would be very high elevation, but still very, very impressive. We're dealing with three, four, five, six, seven feet of snowfall, maybe even more for some of these areas. So really, really massive totals. These ski resorts have to just be rejoicing with all of this moving in soon. We're gonna go through kind of the entire temperature pattern now before we dive into the entirety of the European model run uh, and just show you guys that. So we can talk about the Midwest, Northern Plains, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, where really for early January, we do start to see more potential for snow systems moving through their plowable snowfall events. So we'll talk about those threats in a minute. They are a little bit more in the medium to long term. So that's why we're not going super into detail for those yet. But I am putting you guys on notice that is an area to watch uh, a little bit later on where activity does look to pick back up. So we talked about it earlier. We do see very warm temperatures, especially in the center of the nation in southeastern regions for Christmas, which we can see right here and even the days following. And then we hit the 28th, where again, we do have another, a third snow system by this point for 
the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast perhaps. But look at what happens. Look at what's about to happen here. We have an Arctic air mass set up just over top of the Canadian and the northern U.S. Rockies here. And this looks primed to slam into this warmer air mass and just shove it out the way. Uh, they're not sitting tight very, very long at all. We do see for the 29th here, widespread far below normal temperatures now expected according to the European model, combined with warmer temperatures out west, which we call a positive PNA. This would set up for a very, very cold pattern, perhaps, to watch for for the 29th into the 30th, and that does carry us into New Year's here, where we do get a little bit of a milder period here for the east. It's not super mild like we're expecting here coming soon, uh, but it is very close to normal for most areas here. But you might take notice of the elephant in the room up here for the northern plains, uh, upper Midwest, uh, northern Rockies into Canada, much further below normal temperatures expected for these regions. Very, very cold. And that is moving into the United States here where we see temperatures that are 15, 25, 30 degrees below normal being suggested for the Northern Plains and Upper Midwest. This would be sub-zero temperatures, wind chills way below zero. This would be a massive, massive Arctic blast. And we do see that stick around for a while before we get warmer temperatures surging up the East Coast briefly here on this model run. But it does look like we have another, maybe even more major Arctic blast, as this one is extremely substantial, about to move right in. Looking at the overall entire model run worth of precipitation and storms here, we're going to just dive through it. We're going to just see activity continuously out west. I'll try to take note of some of it, but I could talk all day about it. We see the northeast dealing with snowstorm number one here for the 23rd into the 24th. It's the same model we looked at earlier, so we're just going to glance past that. Uh, same thing for the second one where we do actually get some wintry weather for the far upper Midwest with this one. Some freezing rain for northern Maine or Mass or Minnesota, better yet, and Wisconsin. Some UP of Michigan uh, snowfall occurring there for the 26th here, but mostly that's a northeast and mid-Atlantic winter storm as well. We do get another, again, very far upper Midwest snow system perhaps around the 28th, right before that one moves close to the northeast and mid-Atlantic. And then we get the really, really cold air moved in. Very purely, this is a ridge in the west, trough in the east, textbook pattern. We do see the, the Great Lake snowfall, the lake effect snowfall, really ramping up after this cool down moves in. Of course, warmer lake water, much, much colder air is going to result in lake effect snowfall almost every single time. That cool down lasts, but we see another one move through that's even more major. We do get a weaker snow system moving through the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley into the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast, perhaps around New Year's Day. That is something to watch for. Looks more so like snow showers, maybe one, two, three inches of snowfall moving through at this point, but these can really ramp up as we get closer. So we need to watch for that. The bigger threat is just after January 1st here where we have a stronger low set up just nearby uh, northeast Colorado, Nebraska, Kansas area there. And we have a streak of snowfall for the northern Rockies into the northern plains and into the Midwest here. So let's watch how this one plays out because we do see some major snowfall with this one for parts of the Midwest, even Chicago and northward into Wisconsin, uh, central and southern Michigan there, and even some for the northeast as this one just wraps around. So another more interior mid-Atlantic and northeast snow system perhaps on the back end of that as we're reaching the first week of January would be possible and look at the cold air we're left with tons of lake effect snowfall still going and then we get some ice there for the midwest and ohio valley and then we get another midwest snow system this one's wrapping around a trough as it's moving in which is a pretty classic storm track for you guys that typically can bring a lot of snowfall to iowa minnesota wisconsin and even the up of michigan which we do see occurring here uh, this is something that is a storm signal that would need to be watched and it even looks like we get another one there uh, around January 6th. Very far out, take it with a grain of salt, but we do start to get a really, really active pattern in this more north central area. Again, Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, even some of the plains here. This starts to get going for that first week of January, and we even see more major storm systems moving into the pattern via the northwest here, where they're going to get hammered, and that could swing around or we could see it swing around a more major trough and start to impact more of the eastern states. But as long as we have these more major storm systems moving on shore to the west, we're going to continue to see some major impacts likely from them. Uh, as we take a look at the total precipitation for the entire model run, it's huge out west, but the bigger story is actually the increased amounts in the east. I think that that is a big thing to look into. Definitely a promising sign for more activity and maybe even snow systems, as we've noted. The total snowfall for the entire model run 
It's the same out west, maybe even a bit snowier. It's already looked very snowy beforehand. But we do see an increase in totals for this Northern Plains, Upper Midwest, Great Lakes, and Ohio Valley area. And then the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast does look increased as well. So mostly the areas that we've kind of keyed into on today's video. With all that being said, be sure to subscribe. We upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.